Okay, we're at the bench. Um, we're going to work on the primary or drive clutch first. First thing to note on the player's primary clutch is uh, the, the spider, which is in the side, inside here. The there's the cover, the spider, and then the movable sheave. Um, all have markings on them so that they can be reassembled in the correct uh, uh, orientation. These clutches are balanced when they're manufactured and they need to go back together the same way. Now for the clutch kit purposes, we're only taking the cover off. We're not going to remove the spider. So on the cover on the Polaris, there's always going to be some stampings right here with um, a manufacture date um, and, and some other numbers engraved or stamped in there. That's your marking point. And if you look underneath it at the spider, uh, you won't be able to see this on the camera, but there's an X on the spider. And once we take it apart, below um, the spider on the movable sheave, there's an X also. So we just may need to make sure they're lined up. Some people just take a black marker and they put an X here and they put an X down here so they, they uh, easily see it and don't mistakenly put it back together incorrectly. Um, in fact, we will go ahead and do that. So while I'm, while I'm narrating on the camera also, I don't make a mistake. So I've got my X's there. Um, three ace head bolts, six of them holding the cover down. Um, again, you know, for, uh, for um, time, uh, for the purpose of saving some time, I'm going to use an impact. Um, generally, as a rule of thumb, it's okay to use impacts for removing and taking apart, but uh, I really don't recommend using them when you're putting this stuff back together. It's just way too easy to strip out one of these bolts. Um, or uh, when we reinstall the clutch on the machine, it needs to be torqued, uh, torqued on correctly with the torque wrench. When you get down to the last couple bolts, you need to kind of press down on it. Otherwise, the, the spring pressure is going to try and um, uh, cock this cover up. There we go. So there's our cover. Leave the bolts right in it. Our primary spring. And now we have access to the, the flyweights in here. Um, hopefully I've got that turned right so you can see it. Um, three weights. What you need to remove those is again a 3 8 socket and a 1 8 um, Allen wrench. There's a, the, the clutch pin has got an Allen head uh, Allen wrench head on it and they've got kind of a locking nut on the other side take the nut off and pull the pin out you kind of grab the weight like this pull the pin out so here's our clutch weight and our clutch pin there's three of them um, y your kit will come with uh, different clutch weights that you're going to install. Um, this this machine already has a clutch kit in it, so I'm gonna I'm just going to be reinstalling this one. Um, so you go around and replace the three weights. Get this snugged up. Um, no need to uh, no need to torque it. Um, there's a shoulder on that clutch pin that the the nut butts up against, so it's a dead tight when you reach that. Um, at that point, it's probably a good idea to clean your clutch. Um, this one's got some belt dust on it. We've got quite a few miles on this since, since it's been apart. But, um, you know, clean it up. What I do recommend is taking uh, um, a scotch, uh, scotch bright pad like this or even some emery cloth and go over your clutch sheaves. Work, work straight in and out like this, um, not sideways. Go in and out and get them all shined up and cleaned real nice. Um, that certainly always helps with uh, the belt adhesion to the clutch sheaves. Make sure they're clean. After you've done that, be sure to take a, a paper towel and some uh, parts cleaner. Make sure it's uh, like a contact cleaner or a brake cleaner that doesn't leave any residue and wipe them down and get all the dust off. Um, reinstalling, uh, spring back in, make sure we're lined up our, our marks or the X uh, uh, that's stamped into the spider and the numbers and uh, bring it up. Now I'm 
on this particular model, there isn't, um, uh, I'm able to do this by hand with the, uh, the primary spring. Now some of them, um, different, different models, may have a real heavy duty primary spring, um, which requires, you're, you're going to need a buddy here to, to kind of hold this down and clamp it together so you can get these bolts started, because um, the spring might be taller or have a lot more tension to it. So I've got those on. I'm going to, of course, like I said, I'm going to tighten them by hand so there's no chance of over tightening. Um, I've seen quite a few of these clutch cover bolts stripped out. Um, so I snug them up and I'm going to set it aside for now and I'll tighten those later. Let's move on to the driven or secondary clutch. Okay, this particular model, there's, there's several types of uh, uh, different secondary or driven clutches out there. Um, this is a team manufactured clutch and it's got a removable helix in it. Um, helix or some people call it a cam. To remove that you got four Torx head screws that uh, looks like they are a number 25 Torx. Use a little socket. And get those loosened up. Inside here, once we pull these four bolts out, we're going to remove the helix and then inside will be the, the driven or secondary spring that we'll replace. Now for this spring, you really do need a compression tool. Um, it's, a, it's a very heavy spring. Um, I've, heard, I've heard some garage stories on ways that people have uh, found to, to change it without a compression tool, but uh, besides being dangerous, I'd say that um, um, it's got to it's got to take a lot of time and uh, probably end up with some bloody knuckles. Once we get that the four bolts out, this should pop right out. There it comes. Now the helix has two uh, ramp areas. These ramp areas um, fit over the rollers in the clutch. And when you reinstall it, you need to uh, make sure that you align them correctly and uh, install the, uh, the cam or the helix. Um, now in some kits, in some kits you'll receive a, a, a different helix or cam to install. Um, not all of them do. When we go through the testing on, on each and every machine, we try a lot of different custom angle helixes and we don't, uh, uh, we don't always find improvement with them. Some machines, uh, we, we do notice some performance improvement and some we don't. So uh, your kit may or may not include that. Okay, now that that's out, um, here we've got um, the, the, the driven or secondary spring is down under this uh, assembly, um, this cover assembly. There's a very large snap ring on it. So I'm going to turn the camera around here and we're going to put this into um, 